I added Veronica. Oh, coming. There she is. Go. Hello. <laughs> I'm like, I've never done this before. Yeah, same. <laughs> This is my first um, joint live, so this is different. <laughs> this is so fun. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, Let's see who all joined so far. World School 101, Rainy Two Windy. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to be doing this Share the Mic Live with you, uh, Kristen. It's been um, a whirlwind. <laughs> Uh, past couple of days it's been really exciting to see all the engagement from um you know just everybody um all the others who are also doing their share the mic live now um huge thanks to album knows because um for organizing this has just been a blessing i think for um a lot of designers uh, both um black and white so i really appreciate um her putting but uh, you know this whole um, initiative together and thank you for being uh, proactive and um, deciding to join the movement <laughs> yeah i for one am like super grateful because already i feel like veronica has become a friend and we're yes. already talking about working together yes. in the future and i need to Design get back out to la <laughs> so i can <laughs> yes. once COVID is over you're getting back on an airplane <laughs> yes I say she's, uh, Kristen is my uh, design soul sister. <laughs> we have so much in common uh, and it's, you know, that's really one of, been one of the, the fun things about this is getting to know you and um, just really finding out how much we have in common. And so um, I really do feel like you're like my design soul sister. And, you know, um, it's, it's just been a blast getting a chance to, to know you. <laughs> I agree 100%. Um, so I'm just looking to see if there's any questions so far. It looks like people are just joining in and waving <laughs> and saying hi. <laughs> um, but, you know, Veronica, when we were talking the other day, I was really, really inspired by your story. I mean, for those that do not know, Veronica had two boys in high school and got married shortly after. Most people, I know for me, when I was in high school, I was just thinking about myself. She was thinking about a lot of people and taking care <laughs> of little humans, which we all know is very difficult. Yes. Um, and she has three boys um, now and has started her own business. So Veronica, why don't you just walk us through that because you've had to do a lot of do-overs and start-overs and instead of like giving up you learn to work harder and harder and now I mean you're getting very close to living your dream and it's just so inspiring yes, um, and you. I know a lot of my followers have asked me like how did I go out on my own right. um, and so I think it would be really helpful for you to tell them your story yes so um, I was a teen mom I had uh, two sons while I was in school, uh, while I was in high school. And so, um, you know, basically just having to sort of navigate around, you know, these, these new uh, circumstances. And, um, but I made sure that um, my education would um, always be one of those things that was very important to me. And I made sure that, um, and of course, with the support of my family, that I was able to graduate high school because I figured that, um, you know, if I want to beat the statistics, the one thing that I had to do was make sure that I at least graduated and get a high school diploma. And so um, that was... Um, and let's tell everybody that you graduated with honors. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I graduated with honors um, because, again, you know, and it was funny because I actually almost got kicked out of school because... Um, since because I was a teen mom, so I had to, you know, go to a lot of doctor's appointments, of course, right? Because you have to get checked up on the baby. And, um, and because I was missing a lot of school days, they almost um, kicked me out of school. <laughs> and, but, but they saw the type of grades that I had at school, and they put me in a program um, while I was in school that allowed me to be able to um, transition, you know, as a, um, a teen mom. And that way I could get my education going. And so 
Because of that, um, I made sure that, of course, I took my education to heart, graduated at the top 25% of um, my class. So that was um, a very proud day to be able to say that um, even with children, because <laughs> not just one, it was two. So even with children, um, you know, your, your dreams don't have to don't have to, to stop because of, you know, changing circumstances. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. So from um, after graduating high school, um, you know, I basically was just like, what do I do now? You know, you hear the American dream is, you know, you go to college, you, you know, get married, you buy the house, you know, then you have the kids. And I was already kind of going <laughs> in a different direction, right? Starting in a different way. And so, um, but I really had no idea what I wanted to do. And I would be frustrated. You work in these dead end jobs. Um, and like, but, and it was what I would do to basically sort of calm my nerves was I would rearrange my furniture around the house and I would fix things up and I would reupholster my dining room chairs because I got tired of looking at it, you know, <laughs> just whatever. And then my husband was just like, hey, like, maybe that's a job. Maybe that's a career that you can look into. And that's how I kind of stumbled upon interior design. And I went to, um, an online school for decorating and found out very quickly that they weren't hiring for decorators. <laughs> and um, I was just like, oh no, like what can I do, you know, um, you know, to, to really realize this dream of interior design. And so then I decided I would go to school and um, I went to the Institute of Dallas and this is in 2008. So this is about five years after high school graduation. So it took me that long to kind of figure out what I wanted to do in life. And while I was in, um, in college, it was very uh, expensive. And then I found out that I was pregnant with my third son. And so it's like, oh crap, what do I do now, right? <laughs> Going to college full time and already having two kids and now um, getting ready to bring in a third. Um, I was just like, I think it's time to take a break. You know, let's pull back. And I was a stay-at-home mom for a couple of years. And then I decided to go back to school. So, um, because again, interior design is my dream. I absolutely wanted to make sure that I uh, pursued that. So I went to um, a junior college, um, El Centro. And when I enrolled there, they said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but because you came from a public school, we aren't gonna take any of your credits. You're gonna have to start over. <laughs> And so I started over from scratch and I was there for two years. And then suddenly this new thing came out with the NCIDQ um, where suddenly all of the junior colleges in the U.S. were no longer accredited, um, meaning that um, in order to sit for this NCIDQ exam, you needed to have like a minimum of a bachelor's degree. Um, you know, you had to sit, sit for an apprentice, all of this other stuff. And so... I was like, well, I'm at this junior college. I don't have a bachelor's degree and I really want to do interior design. And so I decided that I would transition to a different school, went to UTA um, to earn my bachelor's degree. When I got there, they said, oh my gosh, so sorry to tell you this, but your credits aren't transferring. You're going to have to start over. <laughs> so, so just imagine this, you know, having to start over from scratch again. And I've already spent two years in, in school and now I'm going to have to spend another four. And, um, but I decided that, you know, I really want this. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to go ahead and go back to school. And I started over um, and I just graduated 2018 with my bachelor's degree in interior design. And um, I'm just so excited to be able to say that um, I didn't let this journey stop me. So when you think about it. Veronica, it, sorry, I, I don't, sorry. To yes. Interrupt. So awkward on here, but I, I think like so many people would give up at that. Like, yes. first of all, it's expensive. It's exhausting. Yes. Three kids. And like the fact that you didn't give up is yes. just so inspiring. And then not Thank only you. were you going to school, but you were also like chasing so many different jobs and internships to fully educate yourself to yes. be the best you can be. And it's just so admirable and inspiring. Yes, I decided to go and do some internships so that way um, I could really like get my hands dirty and learn while I was in school. 
Um, and also because, you know, I figured, you know, if the more hands-on experience I get while I'm in college, the, easy, the easier it would be for me to get a job right after school. And so I would, you know, just kind of look online to search and see, you know, is there any designers that are hiring? And I came across this designer's work and it was just, a, it was amazing. It was beautiful. And I reached out to him and I was like, hey, um, can I pick your brain? I would love to, you know, get an opportunity to work with you. And this man was um, Mikhail Welch. He is um, on t uh, uh, on screen personality for the Steve Harvey show. Um, he is he's currently uh, doing his own show called uh, Murder House Flip on Quibi. And so, being able to work with him um, has really been amazing because he's really taught me a lot um, about interior design. And um, it was through him I was able to kind of open up this world of set design, hospitality, residential and really get my hands dirty. <laughs> so amazing, yeah. And then, what, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you've had a lot of experience, you've gained a lot of experience through him and others. And then um, you decided to just go out on your own and then COVID hit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, that's your yes. break. <laughs> It seems like, like, it really does seem like I just can't catch a break. So, um, again, uh, you know, working with Mikhail Welch, you know, he's taught me so much. Um, I even, um, you know, locally went, uh, you know, uh, also internship at a couple of other design firms so I could learn commercial design, learn hospitality design, learn residential, so that I could really see where I fit in the design world. And so once I got some of that experience under my belt, I decided, you know, um, it, it just be, you know, really fun to, you know, at least I thought that I found a firm that I would appreciate. And the week before Thanksgiving, they let me go. And so I was like, oh, no, like, you know, what I'm going to do for Christmas, what I'm going to do for my kids, you know, you felt really bad, you know, who likes to get, you know, let go from a job, right? It's just really disheartening. And um, then in January, I decided, you know what, I think I'm just going to take the bull by the horns and I'm just going to do this myself and I'm going to go out and um, start my own business, and then COVID hit. <laughs> and COVID said, mm, you know, uh, we're, we're gonna put a little, you know, hitch in the in the get up here, and uh, <laughs> and we're gonna, uh, you know, figure something else out, you know. But it really has been a blessing in disguise because um, with everything transitioning online, I really had to sort of change my business model, and that's how I came across. Um, you know, more so doing the renderings, which I had learned while I was in school, but, you know, now it was just becoming more popular because people aren't, you know, comfortable with designers coming in their home and they would rather just do online design. And so that's what I've transitioned to. And this really has taken off. So it's really been um, an exciting opportunity to, to, you know, kind of take on this new realm of the design world, which is e-design. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, e design. I've, I do a lot of e design even without COVID, and I think it's awesome that you know you've been able to pivot and and make money during yeah. this time. Um, in fact, Veronica and I've been talking about um, her working with me on some of my clients, and my clients paying her to do my. <laughs> I did not go to interior design school. Like, I was not as smart as Veronica to realize, like, <laughs> oh, the child and the young adult who was constantly rearranging her room could actually do this as a living. Like, that didn't click for me until much later. So, um, I think that's great. Um, it seems okay. like people are, are inspired, and I don't see many questions. Does anybody have a question for either one of us? I know, like, some people wanted to see these lights I have behind me. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let's see if anybody asks any questions. Or if you have anything else you want to say, Veronica. I mean, I know, you know, the other day we were talking about race and how it impacts you as a black designer in Texas. Right. Like, if you want to talk about that, I mean, yes, we're well, all here you know, to listen. Sure. Like, you know, in Texas... Um, I think it's like very um, hard pressed, right, to find black interior designers, although, you know, we know that we're out here, right? Um, but I, I remember reading some t uh, statistics maybe a couple of years ago that um, 
the number of black interior designers um, in the industry makes up about one to three percent. And so three percent of black designers in the interior design industry um, is, you know, to me, like a very small number. And so um, I just wanted to be one of those people that, um, you know, didn't let the statistics, you know, kind of bring me down. I wanted to be one of those ones that adds to that number and really increase that. Um, but, you know, being one of the 3%, right, <laughs> and it being spread out, you know, throughout the nation, um, it really has felt sort of lonely um, as uh, there's not, you know, many of us that come to interior design events. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm the only one there. Sometimes I feel like I'm like, you know, sticking out like a sore thumb, you know. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, of course, um, you know, me, I just feel like, you know, if you really want um, to make um, the most out of this career, um, you really just have to kind of put your best foot forward and really go out there and give it a shot, you know, and then, uh, uh, but luckily, some designers um, have been um, very um, wonderful in embracing me. But then I've also had some opportunities um, or situations that have happened in the workplace where it's just not been the greatest. Um, I remember when I was yeah. at a... You want to describe some particular... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like I was at um, the office one day and um, it was a coworker and I, he was a, a white man. Um, and, and I only mention this because I want to explain why um, you guys' sports are so important for us. Um, he, uh, we were at a, um, a meeting and the vendor came with a friend of his. And at the end of this meeting, he was wrapping up and he looked at me and he was just like, Hey, doesn't she look like the girl from the orange is the new black, you know, that crazy eyes girl, does she look just like her? And I'm looking at him and I'm in shock <laughs> because. You know, I don't want to be, you know, the angry black woman, right? I don't want to be the one that just goes off and I'm like upset and, you know, I, I, and I'm also shocked. I'm hurt. I don't know what to say. And I think that my coworker um, looked at me and he saw the, 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 the shock on my face and he was just like, oh my gosh, no, she doesn't look like her. Don't you ever say that again, you know? And for him standing up for me in that moment meant the world. And so that's why I love so much about this share the mic because, you know, it's like, um, again, having my voice be heard through other people, you know, and not feeling like I'm the Lone Ranger speaking up for myself. So um, just moments like that, you know, uh, it's hard to navigate around, but when you have the support of your design community, um, it really makes a world of difference in moves mountains. <laughs> It's also important for people to hear, you know, stories like that, like how sad it is that you felt in the moment that you couldn't stand up for yourself because you would be perceived as an angry black woman <laughs> yes. when all you would be doing is standing up for yourself. Yes. And, you know, so part of the systemic problem, though. Right. Right. And he even corrected me yesterday when we were talking about it because I was like, well, you know, I had just grew my locks out and they were just growing and it was short. And you were like, you know, the fact that you're trying to um, make excuses <laughs> is, you know, um, really uh, daunting, you know. And so and that's kind of like the, the, the situation that I was in. I felt like I needed to make an excuse for this man's behavior. Um, but, you know, it, it's great to hear that, you know, you do have a support and that there's someone that hears you and sees you and they're standing with you. And thank you, Kate. I hear you also, and I'm standing with you also. Thank you so much for standing with us. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Kate, for always being so supportive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I think well, I saw a question earlier. Yeah, Let me see I think if I can somebody asked down. how, how can I do e-design without, <clears throat> um, having a degree okay if you don't have yes if you don't have a degree where can you learn e-design yeah so, so i don't um, well i we can both talk to that i think for yes. me um i'm not i'm not a trained interior designer and i don't purport to be one i am a interior decorator stylist you know um so for my clients i um you know 
I, when I do e-design remotely, for instance, I charge hourly and they, we have, I have this whole process um, and I get um, pictures of their space and dimensions and then I source furniture, rugs, lights, paint colors. Um, I can suggest uh, ideas for construction and that kind of thing. Um, but I put it in more of like a mood board. I think I have a story highlight about how I do that. I mostly use um, Google presentation and Keynote, um, but it's not like a perfect rendering of how the room would look. And that's <laughs> where Veronica would come in. Yes. <laughs> so some clients really would want to make sure before they buy any of the furniture, before I source it for them, they would want to make sure that it all fits perfectly and they want to see exactly how it would work in the room. And that's um, where, you know, you would normally have to hire an interior designer or um, a stylist would have to hire an interior designer on an hourly, you know, as like a contract employee to help them do that rendering. Yes. Uh, so, and I would piggyback off of that also, um, because yes, um, if you know how to do the floor plans and, um, if you know how to, you know, even if you're just like kind of sketching, you know, I know some people are way better at sketching than they are at, you know, computer drawings and things of that nature. So if you, you know, know how to draw a floor plan, if you know how to put a presentation together, you can either outsource the rendering, um, hello, shameless plug, you know, <laughs> or, um, you know, um, and it's really up to you how you really decide how you want to present your e-design. Um, you know, if you don't want to do renderings, you can always just do, you know, some sort of like 2D drawings or just um, inspiration, you know, images and mood boards. Um, there is also a, um, an online um, interior design course that I came across. Uh, I believe her name is Jenna Gatisek. It, she, she runs a, a, an e-design course called e-design U. So you could always check her out. And, um, and see how you can learn um, e-design through uh, a platform such as that. <laughs> All right, That's is there, awesome. Is there some other questions? I don't know. Anybody else have any questions for either one of us? Or anything else you want to say, Veronica? I will, I will try to save this. Last time, I've only done one other live and I wasn't, I, I don't know. I didn't save it, but I'll try to save this to IGTV or something like okay, that. Okay, great. Awesome. Like, can watch it later that couldn't, who couldn't join us this morning. Right. Um, well, I do want to speak on um, one, um, one topic that we, oh, so we do have a question. Is there, is there anyone who inspires you with design? Yes. So um, there are a couple of um, companies that I follow um, that, um, really speak to like my design aesthetic and that I really love. And one of those companies is Alder and Tweed. I just really love um, their design work. Um, it, I mean, I really feel like they're like my design twin <laughs> when it comes to um, aesthetic. And then um, I also just stumbled upon um, a woman, her name is, uh, I think she goes by Happily Gray. I just really love like her fashion sense. And um, she also does some design work as well. And so she really inspired, uh, inspires my uh, design as well. And then of course, my mentor, Mikhail Welch, um, he just came out with his own furniture line and he, I just learned so much from him. And we really do have um, sort of a similar um, design aesthetics as well. And so he definitely inspires me. Uh, for oh, look at her, hello! <laughs> Cutie pie! <laughs> he did. That's Veronica, you wanna say hi? To Miss Veronica. Hi. Hello. <laughs> well, Kristen, I remember. That's we awesome. Discussing... I love. I... Oh, so thank oh, you for sharing that. Yes, no problem, Kate. <laughs> Your. Yes, design. so Kristen, we were uh, when we were um, discussing. We were talking about um, sort of our journey and how we stum stumbled upon interior design, and now we really feel like we're we're living our dreams, we're, we're, we're being authentic in who we are, and we're like just really enjoying this journey that we're on. And so um, I think that I just wanted to touch on, you know, the importance of authentic living. And so um, one of the things that I like to, to say as far as like my motto or my slogan goes is um, living authentically you. And so the reason why I say this is because I recently just, um, 
uh, you know, when, you, when you've had like these, these horrible jobs that, you're, that you've been at or um, somebody, you know, uh, wants you to do X, but you would rather do Z, you know, <laughs> or, you know, if you started down a path, because, you know, even Kristen, I'm, I'm, I remember you said you started out as a lawyer and, you know, then you came across design and now that's really what you want to do. And it's sort of like how I started out, just working these jobs that just weren't fulfilling to me. And, um, and interior design really does just kind of fill that empty hole as far as my career. I tell people all the time, if it's not interior design, I'm, I'm gonna stay at home mom for the rest of my life. There's nothing else. <laughs> and so um, I really think that it's important that um, in your in business and whatever it is that you're doing, that um, you're just staying true to yourself. And you know, even though it can be very difficult, it's one of those things that I'm um, making sure that I keep at the forefront, of, uh, always making sure that um, we're living authentic in, in everything that we're doing. Absolutely. I think just to piggyback off of that, Veronica, I mean, there are a couple questions that we can, that we can get to. Yes. Um, somebody wants to share the e-design class that you were talking about. Maybe you, you can share that in stories um, and then I'll reshare on mine. Yes. Um, somebody's also transitioning from apparel design to interior design and they have no idea where to begin, any advice. So we can speak to that. Um, I about being authentic i think especially if you're going to put your work in the public eye like you're starting to do on instagram and what i've been doing for the last few years it's also hard not to you know compare yourself to others or go down the rabbit hole of like why like lately like you know like i'll post stuff on instagram and i feel like nobody's seeing it i can see my insights and i'm like why aren't i you know why is nobody looking at my work? Why isn't right. anybody liking it? Am I terrible? Yes. <laughs> you know, we're all human and it's, it's hard to get that out of our heads and then just kind of just being fully authentic. And so that's what I try to do in this wake up every morning, remembering like, just follow your heart. Yes. <laughs> Full. Yes. Um, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing because yes. you're proud of it. And so I think, you know, obviously it's hard, but um, yes. And persistence is key. So you have to definitely keep going at it. Um, so if you're wanting to transition from apparel design to interior design, um, the first question I would ask myself is, do I want to go back to school? Because, um, you know, you can decide to go the school route, but you can also decide to not go the school route because there are plenty of designers who haven't gone to school and they're very successful in interior design. And then there are some who have gone to school just because they just felt like, you know, like myself, um, I just wanted that knowledge. So it really just depends on um, which route you want to go. And um, if you decide that you want to go straight into interior design um, without going to school, then what you could do is just, you can start sharing inspiration images, which is um, one thing that I like to do. Is I like to share um, inspiration photos of things that speak to my design aesthetic um, because, you know, I don't have a huge portfolio, right? Because I just went out on my own <laughs> in the middle of COVID-19. So, um, so portfolios are kind of hard to come by, right? And so one thing that you can do to at least share who you are as a designer is share some inspiration photos, making sure that you always give credit to the original designer. I absolutely do that. You have to do that, okay? <laughs> and, um, but also if, you, if you're if you kind of dabbling on some things on the computer, um, share what you're doing. If you're, you know, dressing up a friend's house or um, changing out your pillows, whatever it is that you're doing, uh, make sure that you um, share that so people can follow you on your journey. Definitely, that's a really, that's a really great idea. I mean, there's a lot of big accounts out there that mostly share inspiration, which right. is helpful for all of us to get yes. and, and to also share on Pinterest and get that going. Yes. Too. Yeah. And make sure that you have a website going because we're in a digital age now and everybody, you know, needs to have something to click on and to go see. And so having a website and also, um, you know, uh, you know, if you want to do Instagram, you know, I would say start off maybe trying to, um, I, I could say conquer, right? So conquer one platform, uh, which could be Instagram, maybe it's Facebook, whichever one you're most comfortable with. And then once you kind of get that down, then you can transition to others and, um, and just do that as a starting point <laughs> to kind of get your name out there. 
And also, I mean, I when I started doing it, I practiced on myself. And I, by challenging myself, <clears throat> there were certain like hashtag challenges I joined. So I would be like, oh, I, I need to make this style my coffee table today and take right. a picture and then, like shop my home and sort of, so you can practice on yourself and then, um, well, m I guess you probably don't have very many visitors to your home right now. <laughs> <laughs> but back then when I did, my friends and family would say, oh, you know, you've done a really nice job here. Can I hire you? So then I would practice on friends right. and then, um, clients started to be interested but I think practicing on friends and family is is a good start to get into interior design for sure yes always start at home you can make a vignette in your hallway um just fix up a couple of pillows on your sofa that you um, made yourself yes. <laughs> <laughs> or even if you're just uh, fixing up your coffee table and you want to get a close-up shot of that you know whatever it is you know you can start small um, and then grow from there. <laughs> Hello, <Sure>. Dino. <laughs> We've got Anybody some else have any more questions for us before we, oh, great, good advice. Good, yay, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Got you find your job, <laughs> <laughs> Um, Any other questions for us? Any before? questions? When you when design, you design for, for friends, do you recommend items or do you buy them and then charge them a fee? Um, I think if you're designing for friends, then uh, I almost feel like you kind of have to s s step back a little bit because you don't want to ruin that relationship. And um, I think it's better that, you know, uh, and, and, and this is really up to you how your relationships are, but um, I personally think it's better to maybe just recommend an item and then, you know, maybe kind of give them some guidance and then let them take care of that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good idea. Um, I've decorated for a lot of friends, um, so I offer a friend and family discount, so that's one, th so I charge hourly, um, and then for most of them, they've ordered their own product, so I just, what I generally do is we'll send a design board of how the room or deck or whatever would look with the furniture and then a product list and they can buy it on their own and if it's if it's from a store where i get a trade discount like they can usually call the store and use my name to get the trade discount so that's usually what i do when i design for friends yes so don't do it for free <laughs> and, yeah and often because like often what happens is clients become friends yes <laughs> so yeah, there's always like you know a little bit of a tricky element there right yes <laughs> <laughs> like you're at a client's house and then you start talking about something else and is that your design time or is that you know right, the whole yes. billable <laughs> problem that happened as a lawyer as well <laughs> yeah and that's kind of really what we have to do as designers right you know we really have to kind of um you know, speak to the soul of the people that we're working with, right? You know, we, you know, we're, we're, we're empathetic um, personalities, I would like to say, because, you know, we're not just, um, you know, walking in your space and we're just, you know, going to throw some things here, right? Like we're, we're getting to know you. We're wanting to learn who you are as a person, how you live, what makes you comfortable, um, what's riles you up, you know, what are your favorite colors? Do you love some favorite scents? Like whatever it is, you know, yeah. um, that, you know, uh, will uh, will help us to really be able to craft a space um, that's really designed for you. Um, and in order to do that, we have to get kind of up close and really personal, <laughs> you know, uh, to an extent. And um, and because of that, you you know you kind of grow some friendships out of that. So you're I mean, so right. That's why <laughs> we're creating home for right. people. And, and sometimes we we're even counselors. <laughs> Sometimes we're even counselors, right? You know, we're putting out fires sometimes and, um, you know, just reassuring clients that, you know, we're here for you and um, this space is yours. And so we want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're living authentically yourself um, in your space. And you do get some really good friends um, out of design. I'm so grateful for this life. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> no, Kate we're both so grateful for you. You yes. are amazing. Thank you. Um, well... I don't see any other questions coming in. I mean, we can hold tight for like, maybe, is there one other question? 
Is there any other Anything. questions? <laughs> well, if not, then um, Kristen, do you want to show us your puff light that you were talking about? Your light? Oh, um, okay, sure. <laughs> So this is just, this is a lighting trick that I learned from an account called Nesting with Grace. And it's basically just these puck lights that are, I think they're made for like under cabinet, under cabinet lights. Oh yes, they, like the little under the like cabinet. Yes. Yeah. It, <laughs> it comes with like a little remote. Cool. But um, this wall in our family room, when we remodel, we're, we just mm -hmm. applied for permits, which, you know, could take like six months to a year. So when we... When we remodel, um, this wall will come down. So there was no way I was going to pay for electrical to these sconces. But when I was doing my gallery wall, yes. I realized I wanted sconces. So anyways, yeah. I will show you. So here's the sconce. And then that's what it looks like with oh, the, okay. <laughs> the puck. Like, and I just like stuck it up in there. But then it actually fell down. So I had to glue it. And there's probably a better way. But anyways. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> like a clap on. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of cool because you can set it at 50%, 100%. Right. Anyways, cool. I mean, and like, even when we remodel and have new, you know, I can choose where I want sconces and lights, my style changes so often. Not really my style, but you know, like, right. if I'm changing like the look of a wall and adding art and then deciding I want a light above it. Right. Like, I'm not going to be able to predict that I want a light above it when right. we're, yes. <laughs> you know? Right. So, anyways. I um, think it's so true. Our styles change with our moods sometimes, you know, as interior designers. Like, we start off one thing, and, you know, that's why I have a blue chair now, but now I want to change this. Oh, and, totally. um, reupholster it uh, in a leather, you know? So, it's like, you know, who knows? I might change this black later, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know. I change just based on seasons, right? Yes. <laughs> like, oh, it's like winter, I want cozy, and it's summer, and I'm hot, you know? Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> we um, change design like we change sweaters. <laughs> exactly. I do see one more question. Yes. How do you get partnerships with stores for your business? So, um, I yeah, I've talked about this briefly before. After you get 10,000 followers on uh, Instagram, you can get a business account and that's what partnerships, that's what brands tend to want to see because they want to see the statistics, like how many people are liking your post, how many people are engaging in your post, that kind of thing. And by the way, that's why influencers, that's one reason why influencers get bummed when their posts don't do that well, because it's important for their business. Um, and their egos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, but, uh, anyways, so I started off once I hit 10,000 followers, I started off by like just emailing stores and brands that I loved and for products that I really wanted in my home that I would buy anyways, if, you know, if I could, um, so I would be gifted product. And then in, in some cases, the brand will pay you on top of the gift um, but I know for me, I try to be, I feel like Instagram has become like a lot of ads lately. Mm -hmm. And I know, and I try to support other influencers who have ads because that's the way they're getting paid. That's the way they're making a living. But it's, Instagram is also pushing ads that I didn't, that I don't follow, you know? Yeah. So anyways, I try to be mindful of that and only work with brands that um, I would, that I love and that I would want to share even if I had bought it you know I don't know if that answers your question yes. but. <laughs> Are there any well questions? Veronica this has been fun and I could like sit here and talk to you all day yes well I do want to go ahead and leave off with um, making sure that you head over to my page because I do have a giveaway going on right now and so uh, I don't know if you've seen my takeover on Kristen's page where you see some of my renderings and some um, some designs that I've been doing um, and, you know, sometimes I do some of these for other designers, others I do for myself. And so, um, but this time I'm doing a free giveaway for a free home office rendering. So if you have a home office that you're needing to revamp, I know we're in the middle of COVID-19, but that's the whole nature of us working from home, right? So we want to revamp your space and um, all you have to do is follow me. And then send me a picture of the space that you would like to have revamped into your home office. 
um, whether it be your current office or even if it's a, a little corner in your kitchen, whatever it is, um, follow me, send me a picture of that, and then uh, I will choose one lucky winner to get a free rendering from me. Awesome. That's Thank awesome, you. Veronica. I mean, like everybody, well, a lot of people are working from home right now, and I know I want this. Right. <laughs> so, but I think what people may not understand is that's a lot of work that you're yes. giving away for free because right. you're choosing furniture, you're putting together a rendering, which could take, you know, over 10, 15 hours. So right. yes. that's so, so generous of you. Uh, you. I will make sure to share the giveaway on my stories as well to make sure people. Um, awesome. Thank you. People that see my stories will see that too. Right. So, Thanks. Yay. <laughs> So Disco, thank you so much, Black woman here and inspiring chair designer. Thank you for giving me inspiration. Thank you, Disco Tay. Hey, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Chris. Okay, Crystal, Kate, Little Ghost, Tulu. <laughs> Seeing a lot of people here. Thank you so much for for um, tuning in with us for our Share the Mic Live. So we want to encourage you to continue to share the mic in whichever way you see fit. Um, whether that be by way of a protest, a, peace, a peaceful protest, uh, a march, whether that be by um, sending um, a letter to your government officials, um, having open conversations and dialogue, whichever way um, you like to get active, I encourage you and charge you to do that. Um, and thank you so much for being supportive of us. And vote. Yes, and vote. Yes, voting. <laughs> Absolutely. Make sure that you vote. And um, hopefully we'll see you again sometime soon. And thank you so much for tuning in.